Bye. Oh, wow. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's session for uh, Sensible Senko, our networking session. This one is all about the exam toolkit, the technology toolkit, and I am delighted to welcome two familiar faces. So we have got Paddy from Text Help, uh, who's that side, that side, <laughs> I'll get it right in a minute, and I have got Jim from Scanning Pens, who's above my other ear. He's kind of hiding my face on the other screen. Um, so delighted to welcome both of those who are going to present for us this evening and tell us all about an exam technology toolkit. Gentlemen, I'm going to pass over to you. Who's going first? Go I think on, we're both going to go to gallery, Jim. Does that sound about right today? I yeah, perfect for me. Perfect for you. So you're going first, Paddy? Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay. Yeah. Andy. Yeah. No. What I'm going to do, Abigail, actually, is I'm just going to share the slides. And what we've got here is one deck that we're going to share between myself and Jim. So let me just share these slides, and we'll take it yes. from there. What do we see? Okay. So you should see some slides on the screen. Are we all good yeah. to go, Abigail. We're, we're all good to go. <laughs> Brilliant. We're all good to go on this uh, Thursday afternoon. Well. First, I guess, um, certainly I know Jim, will, I'm sure he'll give his own thanks on this, but thanks to yourself and Gavin for organizing the day and for having us two likely lads uh, along. We're thankful that we um, we get to work with you guys on more than a few occasions throughout the year. Um, and it's good to be um, uh, working with, um, I think it's almost my partner in crime, Jim, with yourself on this one today. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm Patrick McGrath. I'm head of education strategy at the Text Help Group. Most of you will know us for computer readers and exams, things like um, Read and Write, and also we own brands like the Claro um, piece of software for exams as well. I've put my Twitter handle on this, and later on, both Jim and I's email address will be on the slides as well. And I'm very excited because Jim and I are getting to do this together. Um, and so while some of you may think that you know we, we operate against each other, we don't. We operate together for the good of uh, all of the pupils and students and exams officers and senkos that we work with. So Jim, I'll let you introduce yourself at this stage. Thank you. Thank you, Paddy. And um, I've known Paddy for a very long time, um, meeting at shows and conferences, um, kind of when I first set out as just a, a sales assistant to now the way I've kind of worked my way up within scanning pens. And as he's kind of mentioned, really, we work quite close together in terms of our technology. They are very different, but they also do a very similar thing. And, and may, the main aim is really to help students achieve the, the grades that they expected. Um, which is which is exactly what we all want as as companies, but also for for you guys as Senkos as well. And um, just a little bit of information about myself. So um, I'm the UK country manager, um, and I'm also dyslexic myself as well. Um, I've been through the process of access arrangements. I've probably spoken to a few of you already, who may, may be on this call listening in, and I really do understand from a student's point of view how kind of frustrating and how uh, how difficult it can be when it comes to reading and I'll definitely refer to to my own some of my own real life experiences as well and lastly I'd just like to explain thank you ever so much Abby and Gavin for hosting this it's this is a great kind of um, program here and I look forward to doing the webinar alongside Paddy so thanks guys yeah nice one Jim and I I have to say I always love love listening to Jim speak I would I'm that sad person that would sit in the back of a room while Jim's talking. When the good old days before COVID, Jim, anyway, but with the, now those would be back. But listening to Jim and his know. his own experiences and what he brings to that um is always fabulous to listen to. So, um, as as I said at the outset, I'm going to go through a few slides and we'll take it sort of a little bit in turn about between myself and Jim. But this is really an Abby introduced us at the outset as the exams toolkit, um, and it's. For for both text help and you know I know the same goes for scanning pens. We all work together in the interests of the students that we work with, and we I suppose share 
a very clear belief that every student is different and every student may well need a different approach for access arrangements. And we're going to just explore that a little bit. And the way we kind of phrase this up is always about it being a toolkit, about you as a Senko or an exams officer having the right set of tools available and understanding where students may need needs and access arrangements and what tools actually are, are appropriate and in some cases not appropriate. It might be an either or in those cases for students. So really for us today, it's about exams tools that help every one of your students everywhere that learning or examinations might happen. And a little bit from me and then we'll hear from Jim on, on the scanning pen side. But I mentioned earlier, I you know I work for Text Help or the Text Help Group as we're officially known, and we own lots of brands out there. But most people probably know us for Read and Write, and that would be one of the most predominant computer readers, so PDF readers uh, on a computer and examinations across the UK and indeed across the globe. But sixty million people trust us to support literacy. We talk about and we'll talk about through this webinar as uh, uh, and we'll refer to the normal way of working. And for us, that's what Read and Write really offers. It offers literacy support tools, things like text to speech that are there throughout the year and then really come into their own to continue that support as a computer reader and indeed a scribe in exams. So it's really about literacy in general for us and other brands that you may know about. Um, things like uh, Claro, Global Autocorrect, Lingdis, AppWriter, uh, Don Johnson, um, Snap and Read. Anywhere you are across the globe and anytime you look at literacy support on a computer, on a PC, on a Mac, um, hopefully we are there to support your students. So we'll focus today on two things whenever I'm talking about my piece. Read and write as a computer reader. And then we'll talk very briefly about Equatio as a computer reader specifically for mathematical and maths content. Um, but Jim, over to you to tell us a bit more about scanning pens. Thanks, Paddy. And um, just to highlight basically what Paddy said is this is a toolkit approach. You know, when it comes to exams, not one size fits all. It's kind of, you know, it's whatever kind of suits that student sometimes. And there is options out there. Um, there is things that they need for exams. And we're really here to just give you that support, provide you with that information and, and, and let the student decide what kind of access arrangement is best for them. So one of the slides that I always go through is kind of just talking about what the pen is very briefly. So the pen is just a small handheld device. It's very small, it's tactile, it's easy to use, and it also comes with headphones as well. Um, I kind of call it a plug in and play device that you just use to scan over the odd word, a line or several lines at once, and then it will read aloud back to you. Great for in position when they're in exams where they can sit there independently and confidently and i think this is kind of some of the key words and phrases that you'll hear throughout today is what we're trying to do is empower students to read independently and confidently and what we all want is for them to be able to achieve the grades for themselves as much as possible and that's exactly what these computer readers and exam pens can do as well and some of the key facts about our pens is for example it's rechargeable so it takes two to three hours to charge eight to nine hours battery life with it as well and it's also distraction free as well so it's great in terms of when you're sat there by yourself um, and it can sit there and independently read for yourself as well. It's mainly just the exam reader. So that's the one that you'd be looking at. So the orange device, most of you already may have this device or you're looking to trial it. So um, yeah, so I've got the next slide, Paddy, who's got, have you got the control of that? There you Perfect. go. So um, this is just some of the kind of features. I won't go into too much detail about it, but um, we have languages on it, for example. We have um, some settings that you can personalize and change. And, and really, all we are is we're there to give you those tools, that support, and just really help and just provide you with all the information that you need uh, around our devices. But I won't go into too much detail. I'll pass over to Paddy to talk about the other parts of uh, TechSelp. No problem, Jim. Um, and uh, anybody who knows me knows I like my stats, um, uh, Jim, and our viewers. And w what surprised me on the stats side is when we look at all of the pupils that might need support from this exams toolkit, 
additional access arrangements in a very general sense, um, above and beyond, obviously, just reader and scribe side. You know, guts of 400,000 students just in schools in England actually need um, access arrangements in place. And so we're really talking about a considerable number of students. And I don't know how it is in your particular school that you work in. But when we look at schools across England and the UK in a wider sense, there's actually approximately 40 pupils in each UK school who require reader or scribe. Now, that's a great area of need, but also what matters about that is how are we looking from a financial perspective of how much is that costing us in TAs, how much is it costing us in additional resources or cover resources in room spaces and allocations? Um, and how are we making sure that every student is sorted? So it's important when we look at the toolkit that we understand what's actually value for money in that and how should we split our resources to make sure that we have covered as many students as possible. And I think one of the things that, that Jim and I certainly always talk about is the fact that look, we know and you know that learning happens in so many places and these tools that we're talking about today have to work together. So this may be a, on a computer side um, where we're talking about Windows devices sitting in your exams halls or more and more it's now Chromebook devices sitting in your exam halls or Macs in certain Apple schools. So primarily those are responsible for PDF resources. So your PDF copy of the exam paper coming from the examinations body. But of course we want to make sure that we support students that are wanting to rely on the traditional paper. Um, and that's, of course, where Jim will talk about uh, the uh, reader pens and examination pens coming in. Um, so one of the things that I said at the outset was that exam support, so this support from this technology toolkit must reflect a, a normal way of working. It must be something that the students are used to and pupils are used to throughout the year. That's one of the key requirements from JCQ, and we'll touch upon a couple of those things. Um, because when we talk about JCQ, from my side, from a text help side, there is much more of a requirement in terms of evidence and in terms of approval, depending on what you need than there would be, for example, um, for a pen that uh, Jim's going to talk about. But certainly one thing it must do is reflect a normal way of working. And that way of working could be on a computer and a computer-assisted tool like Read and Write, or of course it could be using uh, your pen throughout the year and in our examination time. And that's really where we want to cover today from the two parts of the toolkit. What do we do when we're using a computer and we're getting our PDF papers from our exam body? And what do we do whenever we're using predominantly um, paper-based material? Uh, and that's where we're really going with this toolkit approach. If we have software and hardware, okay, so if we have computer readers and we have examination pens, are we covering the basis of the vast majority of the students? And the answer for most schools to that is yes. And that's a fairly simplistic look at a toolkit, but a very important one because it comes back to finance as well, it comes back to normal way of working, it comes back to onboarding students and helping them make sure they've got the right tools. The more we can simplify this toolkit, but encompass as many students and pupils as possible in that, the better it is for everybody involved in school life. And that's really our push on the toolkit side. Um, and I thought, just as before I sort of dig into some of the text help tools, it's worth considering always the JCQ statement. So this is a generic statement that JCQ put out about a year and a half ago now. Sank was my wish to consider the use of technology to a much greater extent instead of readers and scribes, instead of human readers and scribes. And they cite specifically computer readers, things like read and write, examination reader pens, like Jim's going to talk about, speech recognition technology and word processors for typing. Um, and the reason that they cite this is to allow candidates to work more independently and give them a better preparation. So the use of this toolkit that we're talking about today is very much actively encouraged by JCQ and hopefully by many of the colleagues that you'll talk to going forward. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my part and then we'll go back across to Jim. Um, when I talk about our part of the toolkit, when I talk about the computer side, so we have PDF papers, we have a uh, look at how might we use this instead of a scribe. There are three main points that I want to cover in this webinar today and just show you the solutions for those. The first one is a simple one and that's through read and write, a computer reader, okay? And a computer reader which has customizable text-to-speech, it's secure, it's locked down, it only provides those tools that are permitted under JCQ and it can work offline or indeed online where it is required. It will also give tools like screen masking, et cetera, to have screen overlays 
and screenshot reader controls as well. And that's for useful things in papers such as diagrams, which are labeled, which may not actually be fully accessible. We also have then on top of that in the same tool, speech recognition or dictation, as some of you will call it. But that acts as a direct replacement for a scribe. So pupils can have improved confidence by speaking directly into the, uh, the PC or the Chromebook that's equipped for exams and actually dictate into a lockdown word processor. So that may be WordPad you're using, maybe exam pad, anything like that that you're using, we can have speech dictation directly in there. So that's really going to help in that instance. And the third one sometimes is the forgotten cousin of all of it, which is that's fine when we're doing an English language paper, an English literature paper. Uh, we're doing any of the mainstream papers that we might have at GCSE and A-level. But what happens when we get the maths and science papers? Computer readers traditionally cannot play back uh, mathematical content. So when we're looking at a simple formula or we're looking at a mathematical expression, we can't do that. So we can also now give as part of this toolkit access to a thing called Equatio, which we'll see in a second. And that's a maths reader. Um, and that's a simple case of clicking at on some maths or drawing a box around it for screenshot. And it will read that maths back in an authentic, natural voice. So that's a computer reader for maths content. Now, to very quickly look at these, what does it look like? So if you haven't seen Read and Write before, Read and Write acts as a toolbar that sits directly on top of the PDF examination paper. So you're going to request a copy of the paper in PDF. Read and Write is going to scan that to make sure it's fully readable at exam time. And then we're going to have that locked down at exam time with only the approved features. So that will first and foremost be the approved features under JCQ guidelines. But then it might also be limited to the approved features only for the pupil. So the pupil may only qualify for a reader, as an example in this case. So it will only show the reader buttons. They may also qualify for a scribe and it will show those buttons as well. Um, and you may wish to give them things like digital highlighters as well, if that's their normal way of working throughout the year. But the toolbar will sit directly on top of the examination paper and give them access to all of those things. Um, and from JCQ, a computer reader is an acceptable arrangement since it allows the candidate to independently meet the requirements of the reading standards. We'll refer at all times to JCQ when it comes to the stuff here at Text Help uh, because we want to make sure that you are absolutely sure that you can use any of these tools under JCQ guidelines and that at all times we're helping you protect the integrity of exams. And what does that actually look like? Well, if you've saw read and write before, you'll know that it's full of features along the top of the screen. So there's lots and lots of things there. It can open a PDF paper and will automatically scan it when you get the paper in. And of course, text-to-speech is available there. It'll paste it through. It'll give us dual highlighting. We have full control over speed on that. We've got digital highlighters. We've got all of those tools. But the problem there is that most of those are not suitable for examination use. So we have a hidden setting within Read and Write now, examination mode. And you'll see on your screen, examination mode lets you switch off one by one student or as a whole group of students, the features that are permitted under JCQ and are relative to those pupils only. And the only way pupils can intervene with that is they can only change the speed of the voice for text-to-speech playback, or they can change the accent of the voice as well. Maybe they want a more regional Scottish or Irish accent or a more or a male or a female English accent. So they can have that, a way to tie in to their normal way of working. So it is secure. It meets JCQ guidelines for an examination, sorry, a computer reader in the form that I've showed you. You don't need a form yet for that. No forms to be filled in advance, but you do need to keep evidence on file for inspection at any point. It's really easy to set up and manage those quirks that sometimes come through on the PDF papers from the examination board. We fix those automatically when you open the document itself. It's accurate. People have full control over speed. You can change the features under the JCQ guidelines to fit. And of course, the most important thing is it is secure and is limited to the only things that are permitted under JCQ guidelines. So we can take the same toolbar that you saw earlier and we can say, right, well, what happens in the case of a pupil who needs a scribe and we can give them speech recognition so simple dictation you may have been used to expensive tools like dragon or tools like that but read and write now offers a dictation tool that doesn't have to be trained 
that we don't have to spend hours figuring out exactly how to train it and get it to reflect the individual student's work. It doesn't require training. So we can use dictation as a scribe alternative. And the short version on JCQ is where the center has approval for a scribe. And remember on a scribe, you have to seek advanced approval from JCQ and where it reflects the candidate's normal way of working. The candidate may alternatively use speech recognition technology with predictive text. Now, we all know what that predictive text part is. When we speak into our iPhone or we speak into a dictation tool, say in Google, it starts to fix the words as it goes along. That is permitted underneath JCQ regulations. And they will dictate into a flat word processor of your choice with its features turned off. Um, so that's very easy to do. Pupils will have the limited toolbar. They'll click, talk, and type. In this case, we have uh, WordPad open. So it just sits right on top of WordPad. And as they speak, it will be dictated out. They can use punctuation commands. They can use formatting commands. Uh, they can use numeric commands to bullet out answers as well. So pupils will have access to all tools there. Natural voice. And of course, because they still have a computer reader, they can play it back and listen to it as well. They don't just have to rely on reading that on the screen. Um, so. Summary, meets JCQ guidelines, advanced approval is required. It's easy to set up. Students don't have to train their voice with it. It is accurate insofar as it can be accurate. We've got some tips and tricks to make it even more accurate. It works in pretty much any writing tool that you may have. So if you choose WordPad or a limited version of uh, Microsoft Word Lockdown or a simple Notepad tool, it will work directly in those. And of course, as always, pupils can use that all year round as their normal way of working. So. Lastly then, so we talked about these three things. First, a computer reader, toolbar on a PDF. We talked about speech recognition, toolbar on any word pad or a capable word processor. But I also mentioned computer reader for maths. So think about the tools that are the uh, papers that you do use and could use for uh, a computer reader with. And then think about what you can't do for students now. So a student with dyslexia, for example, what may well still struggle, of course, with a mathematical paper, um, not just with the text, but with the mathematical notation. So Equatio now is available in a secure mode approved under JCQ requirements to act as a computer reader for maths. And that's very simple, and it's just the same as the previous tools. It has an exam mode, so it'll lock down to only the approved feature. It has natural speech playback. They can change the speed and the autoplay of the mathematical content. It will read any maths at any level whatsoever. And of course, it's actually JCQ approved in terms of it meets the guidelines um, for a reader to decode and play back math symbols. And of course, that can be uh, considered as a normal way of working throughout the year. And that's really important from the maths side. If we're using a computer reader for maths, we need to make sure that pupils are used to that. And they know how to use it throughout the year and not just a few days before exam time. And it's very, very simple and straightforward in action. Pupils literally draw a quick box around the maths and it will automatically play that back. They can do it around an entire question block, so the English and the mathematical content, and therefore they have their access arrangements for a computer reader within every single paper. And don't forget a computer reader, as it as versus a human reader will also support English literature and English language, um, unlike a uh, human reader itself, because there's no interpretation from a computer. So now you've got a reader set as part of your toolkit that can address all of those areas. So just the JCQ piece on this: uh, computer reader may decode symbols and unit abbreviations in maths and science examinations for candidates who require this arrangement. And the important thing is there in yellow. It has to be their normal way of working. And the same rules apply in terms of approval for this. You do not need advanced approval. You do have, however, to keep the evidence of that. And after this today, uh, I can absolutely share out the standard um, evidence template that can be used just to fill in the blanks on that for your individual people and keep that on file as a reference. Uh, and that's uh, Jim, me on the three key points of a computer reader as part of the toolkit. And now we're going to go to yourself for the other part of the toolkit, which is, of course, the examination pen. So over to you, Jim. 
Thanks, Paddy. Um, great to hear about the computer reader as well. And um, really, one of the first things that I kind of want to start with is the JCQ statement and about our pen. And then what I will do is revisit the, the slide I originally did at the start and go through some of the settings and features. So I'll get you to go back shortly, Paddy, just to have a look through that. Um, yeah. Our pen is really just a small handheld device and it's portable. It's easy to use and it's a device that can really help and support and i always say to everybody that i speak with is that this device is a reading aid this isn't something that does your reading for you it allows you and gives you that access and independence so that you can scan that odd word that line or several lines at once and then have it read aloud back to you via the headphones and that's one of the core focuses that this device does and can, you can see from the JCQ statement, that this is a non-access arrangement. And Paddy's mentioned normal way of working throughout the presentation. And that's exactly how our device works as well. It's a normal way of working. As long as you've been using it in that classroom, in, the, in your mocks, you can go in and use this device as your normal access arrangements. We can also use um, this device across all of your examinations. So for example, you can use it uh, in the reading section of the English exam, um, because this again, doesn't give tone. It doesn't give meaning or emphasize those questions for you. It just helps you to read those questions. And that's exactly what we want for our students to be able to read that question and answer it for themselves. Our device can also be used if you weren't aware in the modern foreign language exams, as we do have languages on there such as French, Spanish and German. Um, so if you do have one of these devices and you may have a dyslexic student, for example, using it for exams, they would be able to go over and read back that because it doesn't translate. So all this does is help with pronunciation. It helps with that reading accuracy. So it's a perfect tool when it comes down to access arrangements as a potential alternative as well. One of the things I always say to schools as well as part of the package is that this device can potentially stop with that extra rooming, uh, maybe for that support if you need a human reader to go to that person who's in more need for them. And um, this could be the support where you can pull them into the same room as everybody else, you know, keeping them together, keeping them as a, a, a group and feeling that positivity and that confidence that that student can do it for themselves is a real benefit that you can see when using the pen. We've also created it so that it's quite obvious that this is the exam reader. It's bright orange. You can easily identify with this pen. You know exactly what this pen does as you take it out of the packaging. You know this is the pen that's purposely designed for examinations. So there's no features on this. This is completely locked down with no dictionary, no dictaphone and no storage so that it can follow the strict JCQ guidelines set out. Paddy, do you mind going to the next slide for uh, the last slide for the, what I did earlier? I think it was like a second slide. Sorry, Hi. not that one. Um, I think it was earlier. Sorry. You're all right. We're going to go all the way through, Jim. Two sex. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Stop me when you're ready. That one there. That's the one. Yes. Yeah. So thank you. So what I wanted to do when a lot of people all like got our pens already or you're thinking about maybe trialing it. I always go through the settings and and how you can kind of personalize our device. And there's so many different features that you can use and which I'll explain to you. So I've already mentioned around the languages that you can use. But if you weren't aware, you can really start to personalize our pen. And what I mean by this is you can start to edit some settings and start to really engage your students even more. And especially as it can really help to suit their their learning needs. So what I mean by this is, for example, you can change the speed that the voice speaks back to you, which is a great way and can really help with their reading comprehension. It can start to slow the voice down. So you have a gauge from zero to five seconds. And within that gauge, what you can do is it will slow that voice down, start to break the sentence down, and help to support that student with their reading. And it's still keeping in line with that natural reading fluency that we need, and especially great for those with that slow processing that are sat there. 
me being dyslexic myself as well I've always struggled with keeping up with things I read really quickly but then I don't take things in so this is where I feel the pen can be really beneficial that way because it helps to give me reminders I can press the button as many times as I like and I can hear it and that repetition starts to build in my memory and I'm able to remember the question that I've been reading as well so that's really important and how the pen can really help and support as well we also have settings and features such as the word pause we also have punctuation pause and we have different accents similar to what Paddy was mentioned where you can just edit change and really personalize it as well and we always like to give that factor um such as we have a scottish we have an irish paddy in there as well accent that you can change awesome. around <laughs> and we not my voice jim is it no it's not no i think it's your voice must be recorded straight <laughs> in <laughs> yes, still it, Harry, Paddy and, and english jim is that what we're going with here that's what it must be we still haven't decided who's ant and who's deck yet either in this uh, <laughs> uh presentation i think i took deck so there we go <laughs> so with the word pause what you can do with our pen it, it just basically breaks down the sentence it will pause between each individual words you can set it at up to five seconds personally i would recommend it around three seconds it as it becomes most effective for you as well and then the final setting is auto read so auto read allows you to basically normally with our pens as default as you scan over a line or a word it will instantly start to read back to you where this is great if you do want just the odd line or word read aloud back to you however sometimes you may need a chunk of text such as for your english language exam and that's where the auto read function comes in so you can toggle it off and it allows you to scan a line scan the next line or even the next line and then it will repeat the whole lot back to you in one go so you can start to capture chunks of text but i always say as a word of warning with this is our device isn't designed to scan pages and pages and pages of text it's there to give you a boost give you that confidence give you that independence that you can read for yourselves i've been around many schools talking to students gathering feedback and the the look on their faces especially from some primary schools as well where they can actually access some reading that they can actually do it for themselves and the the pleasure that they get from that the the, the big smiles that we uh, that i've seen is just fantastic to see especially as i've been in that situation where i sometimes am struggling myself and still do to this day and seeing someone who can really access it for themselves i feel is is really powerful and, and really really nice as part of my job as well and it and, and it really rewarding for, for myself but did you mind going to the um next slide for me please that's it brilliant so as part of uh, an organization and, and then the same with paddy i like numbers this is something i've knocked up sorry guys so it isn't the best looking at the moment so just to give you a roundabout figure so we've got so many customers across the uk and a lot of people using our exam pens and we were really interested in just finding out how people are actually using our pens and are they successful in exams um, and we'll continue to kind of gather that feedback from you all. But to just give you a roundabout figure, so from the 100 schools, 84% um, of you have said that um, you would prefer this over human readers and one-to-one -one rooming. Um, we also found that over 74% of you also said that it helped improve the students' confidence. And, and this is something I said back in our um, webinar with, with Paddy, actually, and a couple of the others, is this idea around stigma, around normalizing kind of technology really and i feel this brings in the toolkit approach that you know a, a going back to my own personal example having technology or having someone sat next to you was seen as if really bad for you and you know peers and that added pressure of um growing up as a teenager and you found it really difficult to look different and this is something that i've come across a lot talking to probably some of you in this call or talking to other schools is this stigma around looking different and this is where the toolkit approach starts to come in and how we really need to with our practice try to encourage an all-inclusive approach that this technology is easy accessible with Paddy's computer readers for example with with the pen as another solution that they can use that anybody can use one of these devices this 
what I want and I feel is that getting out of this mindset, it's just for that selected student that's got dyslexia, but it could be for that student who's just struggling and they're kind of just on the line of not quite achieving their grades, but they're nearly there and they need just that added bonus. And that's where the pens can really start to come in. So we need to just ensure that people, that we're in, introducing these pens in a in an all inclusive, really exciting way that this can be used by anybody and it doesn't matter who you are. And I will in my next part as well, um, talk about some of the helpful resources that we have available. And I'll talk to you about some um, case study stories. So I'll just briefly explain how um, other schools have introduced these pens and overcome some of these barriers to help with exam anxiety and just trying to include them in the classroom. And one of the last figures that I'll go through is 73% have also mentioned that they achieved the expected grade. And then there was a 16% said that they overachieved the grades that they expected by using the exam reader. So guys, I'll pass over to Paddy very shortly, but one of the messages I'll kind of end on is just talking about our um, City Academy Norwich study. Um, we've done this uh, around two years ago now. so. Um, always looking for schools to talk to. Um, basically, this just talks about how we gave these pens out to the uh, school. And from the five out of six students who undertook the paper with assistance of the exam reader, they saw a real increase in their results. So that it improved their grades or kept them at the same grades, which really really links back to some of the survey results that I was talking about. And one of the things that I wanted to mention, I always talk about this as well, is this improving emotional well-being, this confidence and attitude. This is what all technology does, just like Pally's computer reader to our pens. It encourages people to work independently by themselves and they feel like they're, they're achieving success. And it's great to see this boost, especially how, how, after how much school and hours of learning that we've missed and you know, trying to include everybody in within a really busy classroom is so difficult to do. And I really do understand from y yourselves and from a teacher assistant's point of view as well and how difficult it can be to get around each student. And this is what technology allows you to do. It allows you access to other people who may need that support more, and um, but also not missing those people that still need that support through using the technology. So I'll just end on that part and I'll, I'll talk about some of our free resources and the training that we have to offer um, near the end. And I'll let Paddy um, continue. But thank you. No problem. So much. We're just start, starting to wrap up. But, you know, Jim touched upon and I, I know we've mentioned it throughout the presentation we both have, but that element of confidence and what a likes of a computer reader or pen can give is massive. I mean, if you think about a situation where you have a human reader beside you in an examination and you ask them the first time to read something that you haven't quite understood it or you haven't quite made sense of it, and you ask them a second time, how many times are you going to continue to ask a human in there before you're embarrassed um, as an individual pupil? You don't have that problem with a computer reader. You can press that play button as many times as you want to help you in that understanding. And the same is true of a pen, obviously, as well. So that confidence thing for me is the one thing when I talk to examination officers and to pupils. I'm sure it's the same with yourself, Jim. When you talk there and you realize just how much confidence that instills in examination time, you know, it's 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 immeasurable almost uh, in terms of that. And the other thing that, that Jim talked about there that I wanted to pick up on was was stigma uh, and the stigma of that and having to have a uh, reader or scribe with you and potentially replacing those with a piece of technology and one of the slides that when I'm doing sort of more general text help pieces we talk a lot about technology of course and we say that this technology may be necessary for some of your students but is indeed useful for all and I think that's important when we go back to that normal way of working um, piece that both Jim and I have talked about. And that if we equip students throughout the year with a toolkit such as this and give them access to this, first of all, students are used to using these tools and that's really important. But the stigma is vastly removed. There is general and generic access to the right tools that help them. And I also talk a lot, and Jim will know this, about 
that kind of iceberg thing. You know, those those pupils that the, on that are on top of the water that we've identified as perhaps having dyslexia. But what about the pupils underneath the water that have had no formal assessment and actually struggle throughout the year? This toolkit approach can absolutely help them. And you know, lastly on that, you know, every one of our pupils that we work with is different, and that's why you know we certainly feel and feel together as two completely separate companies that aren't linked in any way apart from being good friends. That it is really important that. Um, there's a toolkit there. And and that's the really the big thing as we start to round off. Um, you know, when you think about the toolbox and you think about the variety and the diversity of students that you work with, when you look at tools from ourselves, a text help, a computer reader, if you request a PDF copy of the exam or a computer is a normal way of working, there's a solution there that's approved and ready to go. And it is the leading solution across the UK for a computer reader and indeed globally. Then, on the other hand, of course, if we're looking at paper-based content in any shape, manner, or form, the pen, again, absolutely meets the requirements of JCQ. And, and I'm not going to um, talk any more about, about the pen and its requirements because we do have Jim, the expert, on the line. But certainly as a toolkit approach here, those two things working together will and can cover and sustainably cover, financially sustainably cover, you know, the vast, vast range of students that may require access arrangements um, in the ways that Jim and I have both described. So look, we're really pleased to be working together on this as always, and thank Abigail for the opportunity. I'm gonna finish up just on this slide, and I know Jim, you're gonna talk about some resources. Things that we have available, and I'll let Jim finish off them. We, you can reach out to me, edtech at texthelp.com. My email address is on that slide, or of course, follow me on Twitter. But we can give you access to the master plan of how to use computer readers, scribes, and maths tools, uh, within your examination environment and hall that's suitable for both exams officers and your IT team who may well have to set things up. We can help you with cost justifications on that. They understand how it might relate to TAs or cover that you have you might have to put in place instead of a human reader or scribe. And also plenty of ways to onboard students and make sure that they're familiar with those. And lastly, of course, if you're an exams officer or Senko on this call, we have plenty of material there that can help you with. What are the JCQ requirements? How do you set this up? How do you request the paper? What is the evidence required? How do we get things operational on a scale? Maybe we've got 30 pupils that we need to equip with a computer reader. We can help you with all of that. So what I would ask you to do certainly is if you put an email to me, edtech at texthelp.com, and just write one word in it, just write exams, either in the body or in the title. You don't have to say, I loved your webinar, but Jim was better, or Jim is definitely the better looking part of the Ant and Deck portfolio. None of that is needed. Just write the word exams in there for me. Send it to edtech at texthelp.com, and I'll be more than happy to um, uh, to send you through all of the communication that you might need. Um, so there's lots of ways we can help, and we're happy to do so. And Jim, I'm sure you have many, many ways that you can help people as well. Thanks, Paddy. Um, yeah, I suppose we've decided who was Ant and Deck. So we've got that. So Deck <laughs> and there's Ant. So we, we've sorted that problem already. And thank you for the kind of closing note there. And Paddy kind of mentioned it throughout and just going back to what he said, repetition. <laughs> I can't state how important it is, especially with either the computer reader or the pen, how using our pen, having it repeated back to you time and time again, is just so so key, so important because you can press this, sit there independently with your headphones in, and hear it back by yourself instead of that embarrassment factor where there you think everybody can hear you or you sit there and don't ask for help. This is where the pens really come in and really help to support as well as um, the computer reader as well. And one thing that I always say is our pens is it's hardware. It needs training with it, and it's really important. I've spent so probably the last two years contacting schools to really encourage support and encourage all of the free resources that we have available to you. We, we're lucky that we have an education team, 2X Senkos, that have come in and created these resources for, for yourselves as Senkos, exam officers, but also for students as well. So they're all um, supported PDF copies to help in support in training, implementation, whole school training, um, just parts on some of the settings, hints and tips, all of this information can be found on our website. However, do email me directly 
um, saying I was the best presenter, of course. Um, and um, I can help and, and point you in the right direction. So anybody who needs any support, please do um, get in touch and I'd be happy to help. And just the final note really from me is um, thank you, Gavin and Abby for setting up this webinar. It's been fantastic. I really like this um, uh, setup of the webinar. It's absolutely great and um, happy to talk to any of you and um, Paddy, I'm sure we'll meet up at some point for a, for a beer. So thank you guys. Thank you ever so much. Absolutely. Jim. I've just, um, I've realized there that we spent so much time, you know, uh, telling each other how we work together and then we were just competing as to who was better looking on the call there at the end, Tim. So thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paddy, if you stop sharing your screen, we'll get to see an image of you. And then, got, then I'll have two of you on either side. It doesn't seem to want to not share. Oh no! There we go. There I've you even are. Closed the window and it's still there. There you go. There I you can go. just so see myself there. twice. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, there you um, go. <laughs> would reiterate, um, Abby, what uh, what Jim said there. You know, really, thanks for the opportunity. We we do as two companies work really well together, and you know, I hope that people see that it's genuinely for the benefits of the students that we work well, and that's why we do what we do for sure um i think next time jim we did get one thing wrong which was if you're ant and i'm deck then we need to swap the order of the slides there because remember ants always on the left yeah. hand side so i you know we need to yeah. figure that one yeah, out I thought that right. that. and we also should have practiced you know that i'm a celebrity get me out of here thing that they do at the end we should really have practiced that but we'll, <laughs> we'll see. Oh, no. well, abigail back over to you again Okay, yes. well, I'm not going to argue over who's Ant and who's Dex, so uh, I'm not sure what that makes me. Is it Cat Dealey? I don't know. Um, we have got a question <laughs> in the chat that came up, which was from Tim, who said, is read and write different to the speech function already on computers? Paddy. Yeah, so you can't use a standard speech function on a computer in an examination environment or hall <clears throat> on an ex in an examination you have to use an approved technology that locks down the tools that students have access to to protect the integrity of the exam. So read and write is a toolbar that offers that. So if you're saying, well, I want to use immersive reader, for example, in Microsoft Word, that's not something you could use in an exam. Uh, in terms of the voices, throughout the year outside of the examination hall, read and write offers a detailed range of specialist text to speech tools. So Things like dual highlighting, different voices, different accents. We have about 99 different voices there to let students both select the language and the regional accent. So it is very, very different. It's a specialist text to speech piece of software and it's not what's just built into a typical computer environment. Yeah, I did. I think that's quite important for, for everybody to understand that, yes, we all want to use what's already there and already available. But actually, when it comes to the exams, it's got to be locked down, which is why. So Jim yeah. has his scanning pens. He actually has two versions. There is a, a gray, I'm going to quote, normal version, if you like. And there is the orange exams version. And the reason being the orange exams one doesn't let them use the dictionary. It doesn't let them do. I'm, t I'm, fine, I'm telling everybody for you, Jim, tell them Abby's what the orange exam on one doesn't roll. do. <laughs> no, that's fine. You're not on, you're not on our payroll. Just I'm not, I should be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's that ability to lock things down and make sure that the integrity of those exams is not affected. So, and they are tools that, people can use or people individuals our children or as adults that we can use going on from there text help doesn't stop working when you turn 16 neither does a scanning pen it's i've got one in my handbag i carry it around with me all of the time um so you know it, it's there it's it's a tool we can use text help is installed on my laptop i can use it if i want to read things i'm currently doing a master's degree in psychology I actually had text help open the other day and had it reading the PDF file to me because there was no way I was going to read it. I just I got fed up of the screen. So it, it's that, you know, ability to give somebody something they can use for the rest of their life. Um, and if they then go on to use Immersive Reader, fine. But it's it, we're talking about the integrity of the exams here. And there always yeah. has to be some um, caveats that go with that, I think. Have we got any other questions, Jay? <laughs> 
moment. Not at the moment. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he says. So well, I'm going to wobble my screen. Has anybody else got any other questions? Because Gavin really wants to type it and make it pop up on the screen again. He was enjoying that bit. <laughs> I like that. There you go. <laughs> it was a good one. So if you pop Jim, the I don't know about you, but when you're waiting on questions, you're going to yourself, now, either I did a really terrible webinar and nobody wanted to ask me things, or I did such a good webinar, I answered all their questions before they got to it. And just sitting Do you know there what that's going through my head? And that's what I was saying. And I was thinking, should I say anything? <laughs> so we have got, there's about 18 people sitting in the Teams chat. I don't know how many are watching live on Facebook. Have you got a number I've, there? I've don't... got a comment on YouTube that says, excellent. Oh, there you go. There's a YouTube comment come through that says, excellent, but there's no question there. And how many no. people are on Facebook at the moment? We can't see it at the moment, but <laughs> it's the chances of us trying to find where somebody's posted the question. Please post it in the Teams chat. It's much easier for me to read. Um, so we'll give everybody another minute to see if they come up with anything else. Um, I, I suppose the question, it, it always comes down to money, doesn't it, guys? That's, that's what Senkos are going to be sitting there going. And I know what the answer is, but come on. What what do we do when we when we're thinking... I can't afford this. What's the answer? As Abigail always answers that question for me, Jim. I don't know about you, but like that. <laughs> um, yeah, she usually answers it for me as well. <laughs> Gee, thanks. I was hoping both of you remember it. <laughs> I'm fine. I'll answer it for you. Um, it's it's thinking ahead. So um, scanning pen. Are we 260, Jim? I can't remember. Roughly 260. No. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. What is it? 220 there we go you've gone down um so a scanning pen is 220 pounds which sounds like a lot of money for one child to sit through an exam but actually if you sit down and work out how many exams that child is going to sit how many hours they're going to sit it for and then try to include the fact that they need it as part of their normal way of working so therefore you've got to stick a ta with them throughout their lessons to kind of evidence some of that I can assure you that the cost of a TA is a hell of a lot more than £220 or even my 260 that I'd got in my head. Paddy, text help. What's, what's our rough price on that? I can typical never school, Yeah, typical school pays a site license. So they so we're very fond of normal way of working and every student have access to it. So typical school will pay around about £1,800 or thereabouts um, in a year for access to all of the tools. So that gets them... PDF, web, um, all, Word, all of the tools they need. And then obviously the, the examination part as well and the Chromebook part too. So uh, so if you aggregate that sort of across the year and the number of hours and pupils that may use that, um, that's the easier way. So we don't do individual units like Jim would do. So even if I had 10 students use that, that's £180. And I definitely spend more than £180 in a GCSE exam yeah. with 10 students if I was providing yeah. them with a reader and a scribe. Yeah. So... You know, to me, it's it's like thinking ahead of what can I give from the beginning with my money rather than an adult that's just going to sit at the side of them. And we all know the impact yeah. of doing exams at the end where all the TAs get dragged off to go and sit in the exam and the rest of your students are sat there thinking, oh, where's my support today? Am I not going to get any? <laughs> um, which is probably the case. Uh, it really does help with that. So any other questions, Jay? Oh. None popped up. See, you've no. done such a good job, guys. They haven't got any more questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> so you might but, have us back now, Jim, after that, then you never know. Oh, I might have you oh, back. No. You can't yeah, be Anton Deck no. next time. <laughs> gonna have to think of, have another, to think duo. of another duo. Another duo. Laurel and yeah. Hardy. Oh. <laughs> Come on, man. I know yeah, which you... one I'm gonna end up being there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> bless you uh gentlemen thank you ever so much for coming along and you know what i love the fact that there is no rivalry between you guys all the other companies that we've worked with on assistive technology it's all about what supports the students and i think people got plenty to take away from today and because this is now out there on the facebook page and out on the youtube they can go and find it and i, I was scrolling through facebook as we were talking and that just happens to be two posts one where this is playing live and the post directly underneath it was a question about, I've got some students who could do with a scribe. What's the best way of dealing with this? So uh, I'm just going to be putting some upward arrows, Paddy, and go, watch video. <laughs> Which would be much easier. 
Um, but it's out there for everybody now. So they can go and find that information and find out how best to support all of their students. And I think the fact that both of you embed it in those JCQ arrangements, because that does make everybody panic. The fact you've embedded your information within that is really, really important. Jim, we were talking earlier, you've had Nick late on a couple of your webinars just recently. So, and Jim's quite jealous because I've managed to get Nick late to come and talk to the Sensible Senko group in December. So <laughs> keep your eyes out for that. He will also come along. Nick late is a uh, JCQ chief, if you like. Um, he will come along and he'll talk to us about JCQ arrangements and make sure that everything is, uh, everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing. But uh, anyway, thank you both very, very much for this afternoon and for taking part in our webinar and our fun and exciting kind of presentation. Thank, thank you, Abby. Thanks Thank you so much. It's been amazing. Thank you. Don't always put me on thank the screen you, on my own. That's quite scary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Take care. Thanks, Bye. -bye. Guys. Bye.